Humans of the Cardboard, we've got the final eight cards for Cyberstorm Access revealed here. This should be uh, mostly filler, I think, but you never know. There's always like one or two hidden gems in the filler cards that end up actually being pretty damn good. So uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, shout out to Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization. They kill it with the news. They got all this stuff like brought to us in the last hour. Let's jump in. So starting off here, we start with the one and only spell card that has yet to be revealed. It's a quick play called Tun 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 Tone Tun. Um, cool. It's a little pig guy using a ten ton hammer. You can only use the second effect of this card once per turn. Target one face-up monster on the field. It's current attack, defense, and or level. If it's current attack, defense, and or level are higher than their original values or and or. So any of those. They become their respective original values. Then pay life points in multiples of 100. Okay. Uh... All right. During your main phase, if your life points are equal to your opponent's and this card is in your graveyard, you can set this card to your field. Okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> this card doesn't... I don't really get it. Um, but sure. That's definitely an anime card. Next up, we move to Wanna B. This is a level 2 light insect. Very cute artwork here. Uh, zero attack, zero defense, hard ones per turn. During the end phase, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard as cost. Excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of your opponent's unoccupied spell and trap zones. And if you do, you can set one excavated trap, but send it to the graveyard during the next end phase. Also place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. Okay. I mean, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's kind of like a... I guess I would say it's kind of like a... Uh, like a pseudo pot of duality, but only for traps. You can only get a trap off of this. Um, I don't love that it's on end phase, but to be honest, you're getting a trap anyway, so it gets set, and getting it on end phase doesn't really change anything. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it, it's it's a fine card, to be honest. Kind of a consistency card to help you dig for the right traps you want to find in a really heavy trap deck. It's a fine card. I don't know if it would actually see play, but it's, you know, it's interesting. Next up here, we move to Pendulum Moon. This is a new pendulum. I think there's actually two or three pendulums here. This is a light spellcaster pendulum monster. Pendulum scale of zero, so very low, and it's a level one monster with 200 attack, 700 defense. The pendulum effect reads as follows. It's hard once per turn. During your main phase, you can add one face-up pendulum, pendulum monster, so a monster with pendulum in its name that is also a pendulum monster, from your extra deck to your hand, then destroy this card. Interesting. Okay, so kind of like swaps with something. Nice. Second effect, uh, hard ones per turn. If you have two cards in your pendulum zones, you can add... By the way, that's... that's oh, yeah, yeah. You can add up to two face-up pendulum monsters from your extract to your hand, each with a level between uh, the, the pendulum scales of the cards in your pendulum zone. Also, for the rest of this turn, unless you pendulum summon after this effect resolves, you cannot activate monster effects, and the effects of any cards in your pendulum zones are negated. So... Uh, kind of brutal restriction there, but the ability to just get like two more cards from your EMs, your not EMZ, your uh, face up extra deck back to your hand is pretty good. Um, it kind of makes you able to like bypass the restriction of like needing to open up a ton of zones so that you can do a big extra deck summon. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I mean, there may be specific combos to pendulums where this card comes up, but it doesn't seem like it particularly wows me, at least you know, right now, but interesting card for sure. Um, there could be combos to facilitate it. <clears throat> this guy looks pretty cool. This is a new dragon called Ringo Worm, the hundred apple dragon. It's a lot of apples. Light dragon tuner. Okay. Effect monster level two, 100 attack, 1100 defense, two hard ones per turn effects. If there is a face up non effect monster on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand interesting that means anything that some i think non-effect can't um i think tokens count as non-effect monsters obviously i don't know if normal monsters do though it's i really am not sure but i think tokens count as non-effect monsters or maybe vanillas are I, I i honestly don't know uh the rulings on those but i know there's a couple of specific weird ones but that's interesting uh I i'm sure a lot of decks can kind of facilitate that 
Second effect, during the turn, you synchro summoned a synchro monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon 100 apple uh, token. It's a worm light level 2's 100 100. If this token is used as a synchro material, it can be treated as a tuner. Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. So this card plus like a 6, which is gets you into an 8. And then, you know, then this card would be able to banish from grave because you would have synchro summoned that turn to get another token that could also be a tuner and get you into a 10. That's pretty cool. I like that. This card's pretty interesting for sure, actually. I actually like that quite a bit. Um, or even, I even think like this, if this works with, um, with, uh, Tenny, this seems like it could be a pretty cool, pretty cool card. Cause you use this like with a six to like, uh, special summon this card, assuming you had like already made a, uh, like the, the link one, put a one, extend one of the level fours on the field, summon this, make a six, which could be like Stardust, Charge Warrior, or, um, the Coral Dragon to draw a card, and then because you've Synchro Summoned, go ahead and get another token and make yourself into an eight for like an actual interruptive piece. It's kind of cool. Like gets you, it lets you climb up into an eight while also getting a free draw. It's kind of cool card. This is a cool um, generic tuner. Like we're seeing this more and more. Um, Konami seemed to be so scared of making tuners that were actually extenders for the longest time, but they seem to be a little more, um, you know, with power creep, just willing to play around with that. We're seeing a lot better tuner cards in general next up here we move to yikes yukai narin no uh kitsunebi yurara <laughs> it's a fire warrior effect monster it's a good stat line level three 200 attack 19 defense second effects of hard ones per turn all face up monsters on the field become fire is very interesting that's technically a floodgate um certain decks would get punished by that stuff like marine sass you know decks that are very type locked or attribute locked i should say um that's interesting and if this card is in your graveyard and your opponent has a fire monster on field or in grave ash blossom if that you know becomes normal again you can special summon this card okay i mean like yeah it's it's not crazy to be honest but it's a card it's a card <laughs> Moving on, we have Sakitama. This is a new spirit monster, actually. This is a uh, light fairy spirit effect monster. Level 4, 400 attack, 900 defense. Can't be special summoned, of course. And its first and third effects are hard ones per turns. You can reveal this card in your hand. Immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon one spirit monster from your hand. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a double summon from hand, essentially, for a spirit. And that includes itself. Uh, except you don't even have to like lose the card. That's pretty good. Second effect once per turn during the end phase of this card is normal summoned or flip face up this turn, return to the hand, basic spirit stuff. And third effect, if this card is tributed, you can target one spirit monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Um, so you have to tribute this. I don't know every I don't know how many like spirit based cards like tribute but there's a couple i will say this there's a couple of interesting like classic spirit cards i think there's one that just says like when this card's normal summon to add any spirit monster from deck to hand obviously you have a mono awato which is like an insane floodgate i do think there is a world where if konami really wanted to they could really make like these guys all the all the ones that look like this the classic kind of like spirit looking monsters um they could make that into like a legit almost like i, I think of like true draco-esque like stun control kind of deck that actually could do some cool things but that's cool uh pretty much just a double summon there and then moving on here i think this is one of the ones that i, I gave, a, gave a gave a quick read to and it looked pretty cool this is harvest angel of doom dark fairy pendulum effect monster scale eight so high scale level four good 18 good stat yeah good stats all around level four fairy pendulum effect you can only use the pendulum effect of this card's name once per turn during your main phase you can destroy this card and if you do add one black horn of heaven from your deck to your hand so i remember this um let me see i have to look these up because i'm pretty sure the one weird thing is that the horn of heavens uh aren't the best counter traps in the world but they are just straight up interruptions and this is just free right just add the black horn of heaven so he said, Black Horn of is when your opponent would special summon exactly one monster to get the special summon in if you destroy it. So you could, it's just like inherent extra deck summons you can stop or in, inherent summon regard, uh, in other ways. You can just negate. That's kind of decent. 
Um, that's not bad at all. Just stopping like an extra deck summon. Okay. Uh, monster effect. You can only use the first and second effects. Uh, monster effect of this card's name once per turn. Um, first effect. If this card is normal or pendulum summoned, you can add a horn of heaven from your deck to your hand. And second effect. If this card is tributed, you place it in your pendulum zone. Wow. Okay. So like you just go like place this in scale, destroy it to search black horn of heaven. And then if you can pen summon it out, which, you know, you're getting it sent to X check already anyway, it just would search you Horn of Heaven, which says when a monster of monsters would be summoned, tribute one monster, negate the summon, and if you do destroy that monster. Very interesting. Uh, and even all other ways, you could also normal summon this card to search the regular Horn of Heaven, and there's any way to tribute this card, like, on that turn would also get it sent to, right to scale, and then right from scale, you're searching a Black Horn of Heaven. This card seems pretty good, to be honest. Um, uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, honestly, whether it's for... Whether it's, like, pairing with the other counter fairy stuff. I know they have, like, gui Guiding uh, guiding Ariadne um, and a couple of other those normal summons that could be interesting. Um, this card is definitely an interesting card to keep an eye on for decks like those. I know it's probably not good enough because, like, the Horn of Heavens just straight up aren't even that good going second. Um... But, you know, it's a fun strategy, and this card overall, especially going first, is, like, pretty powerful, straight up. <laughs> Can't even lie. So, yeah, cool card. And then finishing it off here, I think the final card we have today is Full Active Duprex. I love the artwork on this card. Look at this thing. This thing looks so cool. Look at him. Oh, man, he looks so badass. It's a Cybers monster, too. Okay, this is full active Duprex Wind Cybers Effect Monster. It's level 9, big level there. 2800 attack, 1000 defense. That's actually the Monarch stats, funny enough. You can only use the first and third effects of this card's name once per turn. You can banish two Link Monsters from your graveyard as cost to special summon this card from the hand. Okay, that's not bad. Um, yeah, um, second effect, your Link Monsters can make up the two attacks on Mon your linked monsters can make up the two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Well, just all of them. Every linked monster can attack uh, two, mo two, uh, two monsters a turn. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, period, you can target a Cybers monster you control. It gains a permanent 1,000. Okay, nice little bonus effect there. Um, Yeah, all in all, this card to me is just like, just kind of get just drop it in the giant bucket of like mediocre Cybers extenders, to be honest. Um, when I, when we started reading this card and especially when I saw the arc, I was like, please let this just be like a main deck boss monster. Um, I would love if Konami would just come out and like power creep degrade buster. He's pretty much, he banishes two cybers from grave, which is honestly easier to do than full active. Um, but not that much easier. They're both fairly easy to get to. Um, and then he has like a, a he has like a quick effect to like banish a monster with higher attack than him. But the problem is he's 2,500. So he only banishes like really big stuff. Um, so he's just like okay as a main deck boss monster. I've messed around with him before. He's been okay at times. But yeah, I would love if they actually came out and gave Cybers like a legit good main deck boss monster that like extends itself fairly easily. Like just kind of like both of those summoning conditions. But then also had like a legit interruptive effect that was like respectable. That'd be really cool, because Cybers is just so extra deck oriented. It'd be cool if they just had one really powerful, like, main deck interruption boss monster. That'd be really cool. But, yeah, I'm not complaining. Still, like, you know, still could come up down the line, whatever. I'm sure it's a good small world target for them. But, yeah, um, all in all, you know, some interesting stuff. I think the most interesting ones are definitely, like, Harvest Angel of Doom. That's pretty cool. This guy's, like, a decent extender for Cybers. Um, you know, the Spirit guy. Spirit needs so much help. Fire guys, whatever. This one was actually pretty interesting. The Dragon Tuner Extender. Pretty good, just like generic tuner. This card could come up in certain pendulum combos. I just don't know how, like what kind of combo specifically. This card getting it excavating for a trap is funny, but not sure it would work as well in practice. And this card is like full on cope. But all in all, it's filler. We knew it was going to be filler. At least the one thing that I love that Konami's been doing, they have been cutting down on the amount of filler per set. Like... A lot. It used to be like 15 plus cards, and like here it is. This is eight. This is our eight cards of filler, and it used to be like double this every set. So I love that they're giving more meaningful slots to like legacy support or like legit playable new cards that may be generic. 
and going from there. But really cool stuff, guys. I want to know your thoughts down below. If there's any like weird niche uses for any of the cards here that I didn't know off the top of my head because they are filler, they are weird cards, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that stuff there. But I'm out of here for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe for more news from me. We are done for now with Cyberstorm Access, probably giving some reviews and stuff on the overall set pretty soon. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.